Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to be looking at the last pre-constructed deck from Urza's Saga and it is Tombstone. Uh, it is a triple colour deck, so the first triple colour deck we're actually looking at uh, is white, blue, black uh, and it has the theme of, um, it's basically a reanimated deck or is trying to be and we'll look at why it's maybe not so good at that over the course of the video. Let's have a look at the deck list here. So we have 12 creatures, 12 instants, 3 sorceries, 6 enchantment, 27 land, quite a lot of land. Um, and then we've got a mana curve off to the side there. So let's take a look at why uh, I don't think this is particularly good as a reanimator deck. So we have a selection of blue creatures here. So I'm guessing the intended idea of this deck is that you cycle cards away, you cycle creatures, and then you can reanimate them later. So let's look at these creatures with cycling. So we have Pendrel Drake, Pendrel Drake, which is a 2-3 with flying uh, and cycles. So you can pay two when it's in your hand, discard it and draw a card. Three of them, a Sandbar Merfolk, which is just a 1-1 one, one with cycling. Sandbar Serpent. Uh, which is five mana for a three four with cycling, uh, and Somnifor. Somnifor doesn't have cycling. We'll get to Somnifor in a bit. So you got seven creatures there with cycling. Um, not exactly primary animation targets. Uh, like a two three flyer, and a three four with no evasive abilities and a one one. Uh, you know this is not. <laughs> these are these are not great reanimation targets. You know, you wouldn't be really excited to cycle away a Pendrel Drake and then bring it back later in the game. Uh you know, like a two three flyer is I mean it's for four mana it's alright, but as as a sort of a game winning strategy, it's it's not ideal. Uh only one of the Merfolk is such a weird inclusion. I'm not sure why there's not more of them in the deck, and Sandbar Serpent is just three four on the ground, no evasibility whatsoever. Um, yeah, it's not great. Like hard casting at five mana for a three four is obviously terrible. Um, but you know, it's like it's it's one of the best reanimation targets in this deck, which is really depressing. And then Somnifor. Uh, so this is a potentially okay uh, creature to reanimate. So it's two two flyer. Whenever it damages a player, you tap. Uh, a creature they control, and then it doesn't untap as long as Somnifor 4 is around. Um, it doesn't trigger off combat damage, so if you ever found a way to give it an ability that deals non-combat damage, um, I think there was a blue aura in the set which gave a creature like a ping ability, like you could tap and do one damage, that could have been a nice sort of synergy, but there's not one in this deck. Uh, so that's the blue creatures. Um, oh, no, I lie, there's two more. So we have Stern Proctor, he was a 1-2 wizard for 2 blue, and when he comes into play, uh, you return an artifact or enchantment to owner's hand. Uh, fine for a bounce effect, no idea what it's doing in this. Um, you know, like, none of your own stuff really benefits from being bounced back to your own hand, and I suppose, you know, this is fine in an environment where there's lots of artifacts and enchants, but again, just one of him, it just feels a bit weird. And Wizard Mentor, who is a 2-2-3, two, two, tap, return him, and another creature control back to your hand. Again, don't really have a lot of things that you know that benefit being played again. I suppose you have things that could go back to your hand so you could cycle them, I guess. Um, the only creature with an enter the battlefield with ability is the Abyssal Horror, which is here. And this isn't even a particularly great one. It's six mana for a 2-2 two, two flyer, and when it comes in, it does mind drop. And at six mana, um, so the thing with, I guess, like discard spells is, um, in my opinion, I think they tend to get weaker as the game goes on. Because uh, like by the time you hit six mana, um, most, uh, you know, you're mostly just, you're going to be out of cards. Because assuming you're saying you're playing a land every turn and you're casting something every turn, you're, you know, you're down two cards. And you're drawing one every turn. Now, obviously, there there can be card draw effects and stuff, but like most most as the game goes on, you you know, you're very rarely going to have as many cards in hand as possible. So, like a discard spell isn't going to be hitting 
as hard. I guess if if if, if that makes sense. But also just six mana fridges to two two fire is obviously terrible, even with a sort of a discard effect tacked onto it. And then a Phyrexian Ghoul, which again is a weird inclusion. Uh, so if I, if Phyrexian Ghoul, fine creature, um, sacrifice creature, give it plus two plus two land of turn. That's absolutely fine. Um, but again, I have no idea what it's doing in this deck because this this is a creature that obviously benefits when you have a lot of creatures out. You know, you know, you have um, spells or effects that create a lot of tokens, and then it can eat all the tokens, and that's not really like costing you anything. But there's like twelve creatures in this deck. <laughs> like, what? What is he? What is he eating? You know. Um. So just a very weird inclusion. Really, honestly, a weird set of creatures to be including in this deck. And then that's it, we're out of creatures. So now we go on to a bunch of blue spells. So we have two catalogs. Um, this is, I think, actually um, not terrible. I think this got reprinted in one of the Innistrad sets, just because it has like good synergy. So it's draw two and then discard. So, you know, there is some synergy here that it wants to, yeah, you, know, you can get stuff into the um, graveyard. So then it is there ready to reanimate. I mean, uh, yeah, as we've said, there's not really a great selection of things to reanimate. Um, but at least it helps kind of set up. And it's an insta speed, which is actually quite nice. Uh, and then two power sinks uh, for counter magic. Just counter spell unless they pay X. And if they don't, you tap all their land. That's okay. Uh, one rescind, which is just a bounce spell. Um, it doesn't say non-land, so that's something. It can bounce lands if you really needed to bounce lands. Um, again, it's got cycling. Kind of weird. To have cycling on this because I would think a bounce spell is like it's always useful. Like, I can't really think of a situation where cycling this would be more useful than holding on to it to bounce something. Uh, and then turn about to tap or tap or untap all artifacts or creatures or lands a player controls, and that's kind of that's kind of a fun little trick. But again, I what's it doing in this deck? I have no idea. Um, the only thing I think of is you know. Start of opponent's turn, you do this and you tap all their creatures so they think they can't do anything for a turn, I guess. Um, or you tap all their lands so they can't cast something. Maybe. <laughs> uh, or you do it at the start of your turn to untap all your stuff. Maybe. I don't know. Um, hmm. And then, I think these are the only white spells, actually, in the whole deck. So three disenchants. Disenchant, obviously, really solid spell, really good utility spell. Um, important in this... Uh, in Urza's um, block, just because there's a lot of artifacts and enchantments going around. Humble is a kind of semi-removal. Uh, you just make something super weak and take away all its abilities, and then you can just kill it really easily. Um, one Expunge, which is just terror with cycling, which is fine because it's conditional, so if you can't, if there's no good target for it, you can cycle it away. Sicken, which is just very weak, or I just give something minus one, minus one, but you can cycle it. And then I guess this is meant to be the core of the deck, is these uh, six reanimation spells. So Exhume lets um, each player get a creature from the graveyard back into play. All right, that's okay. For two mana, that's that's quite good ability, especially if you, if you play around it and you know you've got it, you can make sure you've got a big creature in, in the graveyard so you get maximum value of Exhuming it. Uh, two Victimizes. Victimize is... Uh, one of my favorite reanimation spells. I think it's really good. Um, you uh, sacrifice a creature, and then you get two creatures from your graveyard back into play tapped, uh, which for three mana I think is really, really strong. Uh, even at sorcery speed, I think that's really, really good. And then Diabolic Servitude is... Um, it really reminds me of um, uh, Call of the Haunted from Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> uh, so it's an enchantment that comes down, and you you reanimate a creature with it from your graveyard. But if um, Diabolic Servitude leaves play, then you sacrifice that creature. You exile it. And uh, what's actually really nice about Diabolic Servitude is that it is reusable. So if the creature uh, dies, then it gets exiled and you get Diabolic Servitude back into your hand. So it is reusable. Uh, there is like a theme of like reusable enchantments in Urza's block, which I think is it's a nice way of cutting down on kind of the downside of... of um, Enchantments, especially auras. Um, this technically probably should be an aura, but that runs into a lot of weird rules template, templating when you have an aura 
that is trying to target something that's not on the battlefield. Um, if you don't believe me, take a look at the Oracle text for Animate Dead and uh, <laughs> and come back to me. And then we just have a bunch of lands with cycling, um, which is fine to each of those. Uh, one despondency, whatever, really weak aura. And confiscate, which lets you just get control of a permanent. So, <laughs> what could have been? Um, there's a lot not great with this deck, I think. I really do think it is. Basically what it is, it's a reanimation deck with, like, no, nothing good to reanimate. Um, so what I've kind of I I just was going through the card set and kind of seeing things that would have benefited more. So in terms of like big scary creatures that would have worked out. So Zephyr is uh, like a three four fly with shroud, Phyrexian Colossus just a big old eight eight. Um, doesn't it uh, doesn't have trample but it has um like super menace, um drifting Jin. I have no idea why Drifting Jin wasn't in this because it synergizes really well. It has cycling and it is a big and it's a big flyer. So like a really good reanimation target. Yeah, you've got to pay to keep it around, which is not wonderful, but like it's it's better than Pendrel Drake or Sandbar Serpent. Great whale, um another good reanimation target. Uh just a big five five, but when it comes in you get to untap up to seven lands, which is pretty good. Um, you know, if you're casting that from hand, it's basically free. There is a deck in a later set, which is all about these spells. We'll get to them. And then Dark Hatchling, which is a 3-3 flyer, which is, you know, decent size in the air. And when it comes in, it kills something. Um, so I think that's definitely better than the Abyssal Horror, which is just a discard. And then just kind of back this up, there's Windfall, which is like a really good uh, discard and draw spell. Um... It can be really asymmetrical, like you could dump your hand out and then do Windfall. And the way it works is I think everyone discards their hand and then everyone draws cards equal to the highest number of cards that were discarded. So that could potentially be, you know, really, really good. And Whetstone is an ability, is, is an artifact that um, when you use it, um, both players mill. So again, that helps you because it gets creatures into the graveyard. So in summary, I don't think Tombstone is very good at all. Um, you know, it does like the a reanimator deck is meant to have good creatures to reanimate, and it just fails at that. Um, you know, you're paying. I feel like if you're paying more for the reanimation spell, like if the re if the reanimation spell costs more than the creature you're reanimating, there's no point. You might as well just cast the creature yourself, and it's just like it's just a, such a weak selection of creatures in this deck. You know, like Sandbar Serpent and Pendrel Drake, that's, you know, that's the workhorse. And, like, they're not great. They're just sort of vanilla creatures. Um, So I do, I, I, I was actually a little disappointed looking at this one. Um, It's not great. I would have, I think I would have been disappointed if I had owned this and tried playing it. Um, It just looks really, really weak on paper. Um, I don't know if this, I, like, there's nothing wrong with doing a reanimated deck and introducing that strategy, I think, to newer players, you know, that these pre-constructed decks are aimed at. But, you know, there's, it could, this could have definitely been done a lot better, like maybe held off to do this idea in a, in a later set um, when there was kind of a, a bigger, better selection of creatures that could have been done. Also, there's, it's got white in it and like white contributes nothing to this deck apart from some disenchants and humble, like just some, utility spells um probably would have been a lot better just being blue black or yeah like black green but that's getting definitely beyond what this uh video is meant to be which is just kind of looking at what the the deck was but um you know as i say it looks it looks weak on weak on paper but i don't know i never played this deck did you have this deck did you ever play it did you have any success with it did you have to make changes to it i'd really like to know so put a comment below um, I'd really like to hear what you have to say, but I'll be back next time. We'll be moving on to the next set, which is Urza's Destiny. Yes, Urza's Destiny. Urza's Legacy is the last one. So yes, Urza's Destiny. I'll be looking at the pre-constructed decks from that. But until then, thank you for watching. Have a good day.